Might I remind you that landlords live paycheck to paycheck? Your paycheck, sure, but still. And might I also remind you... Okay, so this is going to be an interesting video. So this is one that I just saw come up recently and it's entitled, Are Landlords Really That Bad? So I kind of know what I'm going to expect with this one. So let's jump straight into this. Rent in the US has gone up at a rate of 18% over the last five years alone. Similar to the UK in terms of rents have obviously risen. Meaning every year that goes by is more money in landlords' pockets than the year before. And I'm sure you all know that more money means more problems. All right, let's talk about landlords for a minute. Let's. First things first, this video isn't about landlords as individuals. Landlords can be awful and landlords can be chill. There's truly every flavor of landlord out there. This video is about landlords as a class and the power that that class has. It's not a video about how individual landlords choose to use or not use that power. That's up to them, though most landlords absolutely abuse their privileged status. So this is a common misconception that most, it's almost like seeing one or two tenants perhaps trash a room and then thinking all tenants are bad. I don't like the word most there, but again, I can see what this guy is trying to do. No, this video is a criticism of that power itself, how it underlies the landlord-tenant relationship and the many awful consequences of landlords existing that we might want to reconsider. So obviously before we jump into this, I've had so many trolls on my videos talking about how landlords don't create properties, uh, landlords offer nothing to society, landlords are the reason I can't buy a house, landlords are parasites, landlords use their rent for their lifestyle, etc, etc. I could go one but what a lot of people don't realize and hopefully this video is going to highlight is the other side of the story and i say this by the way guys i am a tenant so i don't own the house that i live in but i am also a landlord so hopefully there's at least two perspectives here the way i see my landlord isn't how most people or how i'm guessing this gentleman sees landlords but anyway let's jump into this this video is about the existence of landlords in general so What's the problem with landlords? Generally speaking, landlording is a form of rent-seeking behavior. That's pretty obvious, given the fact that the thing we give landlords is literally called rent. But let's actually go over what rent-seeking means for a second. Landlords, like all rent-seekers, make money based not on any work they do, or in exchange for producing anything of value. Okay, I've got to stop you there straight away. So any work that we do, so maintenance, setting up a property, renovating a property, creating a property, there are so many things wrong with that statement. For example, I'm building 20 houses. So if I choose to own those houses afterwards and not sell them, I think I've added to society. I think there's some level of service I've provided. I've also purchased properties that were unmortgageable or non-standard construction, and I've turned those into habitable properties that have sat on the market, by the way, that anyone could have brought, but obviously the mortgage issue making it difficult, and I've turned those into homes. So I totally say that is false. I've created, I'm not saying every landlord's done this, and I'm not saying every landlord needs to do this. I'm just saying that the misconception that they literally do nothing and just get rent, no, you're providing a service. And also, as I mentioned, my landlord, it's a godsend. I don't want to buy my own house. I brought my own house previously and I've sold that. And if it wasn't for my landlord offering this particular property that I live in, then well, I'd have nowhere to live. So sorry, buddy, um, I'm gonna disagree with you there. Landlords, like all rent seekers, make money based not on any work they do or in exchange for producing anything of value, but on the simple fact that they own something necessary. In this case, housing. On the simple fact that they own something necessary. It's not a simple fact to just own something necessary. I didn't just wake up one day and own a property or two. I worked years, it took me 10 years to save towards owning something so simple. But they do accumulate wealth. Definitely accumulate wealth, I completely agree with that, but definitely also add to society. Um, just look at our recent commercial conversion, um, unused building, not used, we've converted that into 10 flats. Our tenants are happy with that. The rents are, com they're not even, the, the rents are probably below market value because we haven't increased them for two and a half years. Um, and I'm also creating 20 houses. So again, <sighs> come on, mate. Normally, accumulating wealth is something that's only supposed to happen when you produce wealth. Something that happens when people work. Taking thing A and, through varying processes, turning it into thing B, which is worth more, for example. That's what creates value in a society. And landlords just don't do that. Right, so obviously I don't want to repeat myself, but unused buildings that nobody's living in to then create homes for people or purchasing land to then build homes on it. That is creating something. That is taking something, that little blob, that purple blob that you put up on the screen and converting it into something more. Um, so I definitely think that's more valuable than doing a video in a purple room and just spouting nonsense. That, that's kind of what it seems like at the minute. While some landlords do a minimal amount of work, the big appeal of becoming a landlord is obviously the fact that it's quote unquote passive income. No, it's not. Firstly, 
I'm not disagreeing that there's scum landlords out there who do minimum work. On all my videos, I say treat that property as if, you know, your mum was going to live there, for example. But passive income doesn't exist. There's nothing passive about being a landlord. You're getting constant calls for repairs, for maintenance, turnovers, voids, maintenance, trying to work with the tenant if they're struggling financially. I mean, <laughs> I just, I would love this guy to maybe inherit a property and then put a tenant in there and then just see how passive it is because it's not passive. It doesn't require any work from the landlord themselves. That's because at the end of the day, landlords are just the people who own the deed and nothing more. Just the people who own the deed, just, yeah, that's it. I just woke up one day and just owned a deed. I didn't save 25% deposit. I didn't pay stamp duty, insurance and all that sort of stuff. I just, yeah, just, just owned a deed. In other words, a landlord doesn't actively produce anything for society, or at least they don't need to. You, in contrast, most likely do. Right, so he goes on and talks about random jobs and stuff here, um, but they do produce something. They produced a home for somebody, a habitable home that is now somewhere you can live. Uh, maybe from nothing, maybe they inherited it. I'm not even hating on people who have inherited properties or just brought one that's ready to go. Listen, at the end of the day, they're providing something out there, just like like anything, like a hotel provides a service, like oil companies, like a any sort of like food industries, anything that offers something. Role as a worker, you probably transform some raw material into something else. What is this? Or you provide a service to someone, or you create something for others to use or enjoy. People can use the house and have the flexibility that they can leave within six months, three months, 12 months, depending on the AST. They haven't got to worry about voids and maintenance. They can just leave flexibility. They can go wherever they want. And um, they're not fixed to that one place. Or you're currently pursuing some kind of education or training and will do one of those things soon. The important thing is that without you, there would be no economy to speak of. <laughs> this is brilliant. Okay, so education. I've got a degree, diploma, and a master's. I've worked since the age of 15, so I'd like to consider that I've contributed to society. Most likely, your boss pays you money for the work you do because it's produced something of value for at least one person, if not society writ large. Mm -hmm. But the same can't be said for landlords. Landlords don't produce anything. They don't design the buildings they own, that's architects. They don't plan or even finance their construction, that's developers and governments. They don't actually build the houses, that's construction workers. They don't handle the wiring, that's electricians. Wow. They don't fix your sink, that's the super or a handy worker of some sort. Landlords literally just own the house, that's it. That's all we do apparently. So yeah, that's literally, we just wake up one day and just own a house. Legally, that's all it takes for them to collect rent. Anything else they choose to do is extra credit. So legally, yes, kind of, uh, context-wise. However, there's a lot of capital that's required. And that capital doesn't just come from thin air. That capital comes from offering a service and getting paid for that, especially in my circumstance. Maybe not for everyone, unless you're born into millions and then all of a sudden you just start buying properties and renting them out. I've had to do all of these things that this guy's mentioning. I contribute to society, get paid for doing something. I've had many jobs either from factory work to bartending, to sales, to project management, to social work, to then getting paid for that, to then save from that money and then just get those title deeds. But landlords will tell you the opposite. To try to justify themselves and their parasitic role, landlords will often say something like, well, landlords provide housing. Yeah. The idea being that this is some kind of risk landlords are doing, and if we didn't have landlords, where would people get their homes? It's definitely a risk um, taking a property on. You don't know if you're going to get a dodgy tenant or somebody's not willing to pay or if they're going to trash the property. That That's certainly not spoken about enough. Without landlords, there would there'd be some houses just unoccupied. What about the 20 houses on building? Who else was going to build those on that land? The land was just sitting there for ages. All the properties that are unencumbered or non-standard construction that people may not be able to get a mortgage on. I believe that's adding to society. Correct me if I'm wrong uh, in the comments below, guys, but I'm sure that's definitely adding something. Landlords are nothing more than a useless middleman, controlling more of the supply than they can use themselves, exactly like a scalper, in order to resell it and skim money off the top. So my only thought is he's thinking about one type of landlord, and this is a problem with social media, especially when I show some of the comments. Uh, I'll put some on the screen actually here about about what people believe to be landlords, as if there's only one type. It's almost like thinking there's only one type of tenant. No, landlords exist for various reasons. You could have inherited a property. You could have potentially brought a new property and decided to put your, your first property on rent. You could have created homes. You could have converted properties into homes, commercial to residential. There's so many other reasons. And I think he's either uneducated or he's purposely trying to virtue signal and appeal to the people who believe in, in, in this. Um, 
ideology or wh whatever we want to call it just to get some views and like a bit of context because what you're saying is you're labeling everyone under the same umbrella and i just think that's a little bit unfair a lot of money on average landlords in the u.s make 97k a year wow okay so i'm either doing this wrong but as a landlord that's not what we make insurance voids maintenance tax upfront costs there's so many things factored that you don't actually make a lot of money off like a buy to let the way you do make your money and i'll be fully transparent is the wealth that it creates through capital appreciation so obviously you know in 10 20 years time i'm not sitting there pretending that that hasn't gone up and putting twenty thousand pounds into a property as opposed to twenty thousand pounds into a bank is most certainly gonna yield you better results right i'm, I'm not disagreeing with that but let's not pretend that you're gonna make that, that kind of money i mean just the basic buy to let if i just think of one of them probably about three thousand pounds it makes um, and then obviously if i add that to my income that's getting taxed so i'd need what <sighs> my mass if i get it wrong i apologize but i need 30 of those properties to make this 97k average i i think he's just i don't know if he's plucking these figures from there or if, or if it's a completely different market in us but um this is another thing as well sometimes you can just say something online and you get enough people to watch the video people will just believe it on average makes twice as much as you and does literally nothing no no they don't <laughs> they don't they, some of my tenants have better televisions than myself guys my television is eight years old i don't spend money on crazy stuff i save my money and i, I just want to make sure that i have some assets my family's never had homes i want to make it better for the next generation whether you agree with that or not that's entirely up to you however to, to just make blase statements like that on top of your insurance and your voids and your maintenance and all that sort of stuff there's a mortgage cost there's a mortgage interest cost as well there's a refinancing there's all these extra costs that this guy just thinks you know we just don't pay because what we're a landlord and we just sit there taking passive income living on boats with 97k come on mate landlords might claim that their added value to society is that they are facilitating the transmission of housing from the person who built it to the person who will eventually live in it. But even that isn't true. Landlords make the process worse. If the landlord could buy the house in the first place, it's because it was already on sale somewhere, meaning that anyone could buy it themselves. Therefore, landlords interrupt the process of housing going from producer to user. So if anyone could buy it, but then a landlord decides to buy it, how is that interrupting the process? Why doesn't somebody else buy it and interrupt the process of a landlord buying it? I don't get that argument, um, especially when something's been on sale or it's on the market. Everyone has rights to buy it. And given that landlords offer nothing to society, they don't create nothing of value, they shouldn't be getting paid and they shouldn't have any money, right? So actually, somebody working should be able to buy that property before a landlord who literally offers nothing to society, so they shouldn't be earning any money. Make it make sense, mate. Make it make sense. They take a one-step process and complicate it. As part of this intrusion, they actively slow the process down and make it more expensive by outcompeting legitimate consumers. All thanks to their privileged financial means. Privileged financial means. So again, I have to believe that he's talking about a particular type of landlord. I don't know if he's been hurt by somebody in the past or he's looking at a certain demographic, but there's nothing privileged about my upbringing. I've, I've spoken about this openly and honestly, I come from one of the poorest backgrounds. Even in my old school, I was like the, the poorest kid there. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. It was just the cards we were dealt. But my whole goal is to create wealth and try and help you guys as well. Like do the same thing. I don't think there's anything wrong if you do it with the right intentions. Again, I I add to the housing market by the next 18 months. I would have added 30 homes to the housing market. I've converted them. I think I brought like one or two that were already on the market, but they were on the market. Like anyone could have brought them and I didn't undercut it. I didn't do anything shady. I still had to get a mortgage. I still had to pay for it. So I, I just find these arguments really, and it's always from people who, are so narrow-minded in their thought process. I mean, the first time I ever saw a landlord or somebody with an additional property, I didn't think, oh, you parasite. What? My first thought was, wow, how did you afford a property? We can't even afford a home growing up. So how, how can I get into a situation where I could potentially own a home? It was more about the how rather than just, you know, becoming a victim. I could have been a victim and thought, why haven't we got a house? Why can't my family afford to buy a property or own a house? But I just never thought that. I just thought, okay, the cards might be stacked against us now, but how can I tip them in my favor? Very almost like victim mindset mentality here. Because landlords are privileged. And to see that... Totally not. No further than another thing landlords say. Oftentimes, you'll hear landlords tell people that if they don't like the landlord-tenant relationship, they can just leave or buy their own home if that's what they prefer. It's so simple. Just buy your own home if you're so upset. But it's obvious that's a BS argument, right? Buying a home is absurdly expensive. I agree, hence why it's taken me 10 years to buy a home. I'm not saying that there's not just rich people out there who just 
you know, scoop up properties. But for a lot of people, we, we still work. Like I still work seven days a week. I'm really struggling, guys. We're like, we're not even halfway. And I, I just can't listen to this um, go on because I, I'm hoping anyway that he's speaking about one type of landlord which i think is a little bit sneaky because we could all just bring up and say every tenant's bad but then i'll be labeling myself as a bad tenant i don't believe i'm a bad tenant um i think there's good and bad in everything and i just think you need a little bit more information you need to actually understand what an actual landlord should be doing i'm not saying they all do this by the way but let's not pretend that every tenant pays their rent on time and you know they look after the property as if it was their own as well I'm not saying they should i'm just i'm just saying stuff i'm not here trying to cause an argument or anything so guys i'm gonna have to leave the video there because i'm getting a little bit like uh, a bit of a ring and i've got a bad ear on the other side as well so i'm gonna leave it here let me know what your thoughts are about landlords am i completely off the ball let me know educate me i'm happy to learn thanks for watching